Thank you so much for joining our first Google Plus Hangout on Air series, What I Wish I Knew Before I Said I Do. We are here to answer all of your wedding questions and concerns with top wedding experts and editors. Today, for our Wedding Wednesday, we have Sochil Gonzalez from AAB Creates and Hi. Cece Johnson from CC New York. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. So for this, for this uh, segment, we're going to talk about wedding do's and don'ts. So I'm going to start with Sochil. Um, Sochil, what is the most important lesson that you've learned so I would say that probably my most important lesson that I would give advice to having seen brides for the past 10 years is I know that you care so much about all of the details, but on the day, try and be present. Um, try Remember that nobody re knows all of the little tiny things you plan, so no one's going to notice if a tiny thing is awry. Just enjoy the day surrounded by family and friends and the person that you chose to spend the rest of your life with and be in the moment, and you will make the best memories possible no matter what happens. That's, such gr that's so great because I feel like a lot of brides, they kind of like lose themselves sort of in the moment because they're just planning so much. I think that it's so, you know, we get so, like, really excited about all the details and the programs and the napkin folds and where the gifts are going to go, but no one will know if it's like slightly off of your plan and hopefully you're so enjoying it that you won't even notice yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. So Cece, what are your top five tips for brides to keep um, in mind for the day of? Well, I definitely second what Sochil said and agree completely. I mean, I also have to say I think you should, you know, have a planner there. Hire a wedding planner. It's the most valuable, valuable thing you could really do for your wedding day because it allows you to truly be a guest at your own wedding, which is, like, priceless in my opinion because you don't want to be worrying about, like, you know, are the escort cards there? Is the DJ playing my song? When do I do my toast? Like, they take care of all of that for you. So I always highly recommend that. I mean, I even did it for my own wedding, and I, like, swear it's the best. So I definitely recommend. Um, and I also, one thing that my, our planners did for our wedding is they took us to the reception before, like, when our guests were having cocktails, and we got to really just be in the moment and see the room before all the guests came. And I just thought that was so fantastic and really special because we got to kind of have that moment um, together for us versus like feeling pressured that we had to go talk to all our guests or like say hi or, you know, so we really got to sit, sit there and absorb the beauty of the room that we had spent so much time <laughs> and energy, you know, designing for a year or however long you're engaged. So that was really special. Um, another thing, it sounds silly, but to stay hydrated. Uh, I mean, of course, drink lots of champagne and whatever your drink of choice is. <laughs> but don't forget to mix in some water because, uh, uh, you know, you don't want to pass out too early and you want to really just enjoy the day and, and feel yourself instead of getting tipsy too quickly because usually uh, that comes fast, right? So chill. <laughs> totally. That, you know, you usually, you're usually hungry. You've been eating. You haven't been thinking you about food. You haven't eaten because so. you're nervous. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and like one glass can get get to your head quickly. So, anyways, um, and then I'd say um, just don't stress the small stuff. You know, like if your if little things go differently, just like Sochil said, like it's gonna happen. And but you know that it's just gonna be your special day filled with everyone you love, and just make the most of it, and like embrace it, and go with it, and no one will know. <laughs> Absolutely, it's always important to have fun. Most importantly. But to kind of switch gears and talk a little bit more about the actual ceremony, so chill. When should a bride take off her veil, and where do you put it on um, your engagement ring during okay. the ceremony? So the first thing, so that you don't forget later, as soon as you wake up on the day of your wedding, take your engagement ring from your ring finger in your left hand and move it to the ring finger on your right hand, just so that you're not fumbling with it. It's like one of those little tiny things that I've seen girls forget, and they're up at the altar, and it's like, ah. <laughs> Just always remember your wedding band is supposed to go closest towards your heart, and that's the easiest way to remember to put your engagement ring just on the other hand, and then you can put it back on afterwards. Um, as far as veils go, you know, it depends, because if you have a birdcage veil, and it's sort of the way that you envisioned yourself looking, you could keep it on all night, but if you have a cathedral veil um, or a longer veil, I always recommend taking that off as soon as the ceremony is over and you take a few photos but before your first dance. Um, and if you have 
kind of a shoulder length or a blusher veil, um, some brides, and it's very pretty for photos to keep it on for your first dance and then remove it after that. So it depends slightly on the length of the veil, and of course, there's no real wrong answers, but it is usually more comfortable for the bride that way. Uh, and you don't really want to be dancing up the night away with this long cathedral veil. <laughs> Everyone will start stepping on it. Right. Great. Um, so, Cece, how do you recommend a bride and groom to greet guests if they don't want a formal receiving line? I think that it's just about being present and, like, you know, mingling with them. And if you're, you know, during dinner, maybe you walk around the room and just, like, make sure that you say hello to everybody. And, and just, I think you don't have to do it as, like, an organized, like, this is the time when I have to say hi to everybody. Just make a point, like, maybe you know, you have three or four or five or ten tables, so maybe the first, I don't know, couple minutes of the wedding party, you're talking on those two tables, and then later after dinner, you're doing those two tables or whatever. You just break it up and really, I think, kind of go at your own leisure, and then you're able to really not feel like you're a broken record saying the same thing to every single guest or feeling confused and, you know, just kind of, I guess, spread it out, you know? Right, absolutely. And uh, so, Chill, we hear that newlyweds are not participating in the cake cutting part of the ceremony anymore. Can you talk a little bit about that and sort of what is the plan of action if you do decide that that's something you want to do? So um, I'll say that I've definitely noticed over the last three or four years that the cake, while cakes have not gotten out of fashion, the cake cutting ceremony for s several reasons seems to have, like, I think a lot of the time couples are concerned that they're interrupting the party and so they don't want another yet another ceremonial thing to do um, that's going to disrupt the evening. Sometimes, uh, as odd as it seems, even though like you walk down the aisle and stood in front of everyone, people feel like they're done being the center of attention and having everyone just stare at them. But I would say that um, there's certain things about weddings that no matter how low-key it is are slightly theatrical and the cake cutting ceremony is one of them. It's a crowd pleaser. So if if you're going to have a cake, it's better to have a cake cer cutting ceremony because I can tell you that from the planner's point of view, all night long guests are just coming back and forth up to us saying, what time are we cutting the cake? It's um, an unspoken cue to guests that the party's about to hit another level. So for older guests, it's the cue that it's now polite to kind of pack up their purse and, make, and they can go home. And for younger guests, they now know the photographer's probably getting out of there and they can get a couple extra drinks at the bar and get a little bit crazier on the dance floor. So it actually is a great way to pace the night. Um, if you are going to have a cake cutting ceremony, really the main thing to do is to just have one person that's there and usually it's someone from your catering staff or the banquet manager at your venue that will come by, make sure to have the cake knife, uh, two glasses of champagne and, um, and a little cake plate and a napkin for the two of you and they'll usually help start you with the first cut and then typically you'll cut it together, place one slice on the plate and then feed each other but not messily, <laughs> a, a, a sweet bite and it's meant to symbolize like a sweet start to life together and then you toast with your champagne and it's actually a very lovely and when you think about how many generations of people have been performing that ceremony it's a great way to think about just continuity for all the fabulous married people that have been in your families and in your lives over the years so um, I love it and it's a relatively stress-free way um, to kind of like kick the party up at the final notch before everybody heads home. Great. We actually got a question from Twitter from at Cinderella's story, and I think both of you guys, if you could answer this, would be great. Uh, she says, I hope there will be talk about putting the fashion in weddings. What do you think about that with all these high fashion trends? Cece, do you want to talk a little oh. bit about that? I love that question. I mean, definitely I feel like fashion, obviously I'm a big fan of it. I think it's really important, and especially when it comes to your bridesmaids, like, pick a designer that makes beautiful dresses and makes them feel really good and and maybe they don't have to all be dressed the exact same way. I'm really a big fan of that they you maybe we choose a color and like based on their body types or their personality let them sort of show their own style that way uh, and it just I don't know it just makes for well much more beautiful photos but also I think your bridesmaids feel more beautiful and and themselves and they get to like really you know have a great time and not feel like they're in some gaudy dress because they're forced to. <laughs> totally. Do you agree, so, yeah. I totally agree. I think that as people are getting so much more fashion forward and fashion itself has become so much across the board, um, 
having everybody, assuming that one dress for every girl is so not necessarily, like, um, it's not necessarily necessary, but it's also, like, there's a lot of ways that you can tie them together and make it cohesive while still letting everyone's personality shine, which is what fashion's really about. I also think that weddings are such right. a fantastic time to have some great accessories. I mean, obviously, like, everybody that goes on to brides.com or any other wedding blog sees that wedding shoes, like the bridal shoe shot has become such a great big thing and it's a great chance to like splurge on some unforgettable shoes that you know if you know you might even be able to wear again and you'll always think of them as the shoes that you took your first wedding dance in. So I, I, I feel fashion plays such a role in like the look that you'd always imagined yourself and it's a chance to like really just go all out with it um, the way you dreamed of. Well, I hope that answers your question at Cinderella's story. Uh, Cece, before we wrap things up, um, as a wedding stationery professional, what is the one thing people don't know when it comes to wedding invites, and what would you say is the most important process when it comes to sending them out? Yeah, so one of the most common questions we get is the uh, how many am I supposed to order? And I love to always say this is one of my biggest tips because it's often a confusion where if you're having 200 guests, you need to you think you need to order 200 invitations, but actually remember that one invitation invites two guests. So you actually are going to save money because you're not overly or you're not ordering more than you need to. So my formula is that you basically take your guest list and then divide it in half. So if you had 200 guests, divide in half, that's 100 and then add another 25 for cushion. And I've definitely you have to assess, too, uh, if you have a lot of singles or a lot of like independent people coming, then, um, then obviously you add a little bit more. But typically, one invite invites two people or a family. So it's a really good tip to remember, and it definitely saves you a lot of extra money in the end. Great. And uh, to finish our hangout, I wanted to ask Sochil and CC separately, um, what would be the best piece of advice that you can give to your bride to be? I'd say the best thing that I could recommend is to really figure out what is your priority as a couple for this, the wedding. And it's going to change for everyone. Like for some people, it's like an unforgettable dance party with their friends and family. Or for other people, it's like a really like amazing dinner experience with their friends and family. And really like, or uh, walking into a beautiful room and just like having a design that speaks to who they are as a couple and their taste and their style and like you know hopefully you can have all of those things but I think it's really great to kind of go in with one clear priority of like what the ultimate goal is so that the day after your wedding when you're exhausted and you're in your honeymoon suite like you look back over at each other and you're like that was perfect. Um, and that was exactly what I dreamed that it would be. And we were all dancing all night long, or we all had the most amazing meal, and my dad made the most beautiful toast. So I think setting a priority for like what the most important takeaway is for the two of you is going to always make sure that you stay focused because you'll see so many exciting things to splurge on and so many exciting things to like get involved into like the planning process. But if you stay focused, um, I find that it all falls into place. Yeah, I agree completely. And I think also it's about making decisions based on what you love and like what really excites you as a couple and not necessarily like what mom says or what your sister says or your maid of honor because everybody is going to have their own opinion and everyone's totally. going to share with you what they think and if you're going to be emotions run wild and you're worried and you're concerned and like, oh my gosh, if my mom doesn't like it, is it going to my wedding day going to be ruined? <laughs> Which it definitely won't. And I I can tell you from my own personal experience, like I, we made you know every decision based on that vision and based on what we loved and what we wanted. And I do totally remember having that moment, holding my husband's hand and saying like, "Wow, this is like our party. This is our day." And it was so special to like think like the music, the food, our friends, our family, the dresses, like everything, the location, it was all what we wanted. So really stick true to what your gut says, what you love, and, and go with that, and not be strayed by all the million decisions out there. And gosh, it's so overwhelming with what's available online now. And you know, once you picked your dress, just stop looking at dress images, because yeah. you'll just torture yourself. <laughs> just look at yours, and stop. it'll be wonderful. It's so true. <laughs> and the only add-on that I would say, because Cece is so right, is that it is like, it's a great opportunity for it to be the first 
thing that the two of you really host together and it it's a great way for you to say like exactly. this is the way that we're going to entertain from now on like this is like we're you know these are the kind of parties we're going to have this is like our kind of attitude towards like celebrating as a couple and it's a beautiful way to look at the planning process oh, well thank you so Definitely. much you guys i mean this was really informative i hope all of you viewers out there learned something. Um, and make sure to chime into this conversation with, and all your thoughts and the tips that you gathered by using hashtag Rides Hangout and on Wedding Wednesday, which is today. And uh, follow Brides on Google Plus. And where do we find you, Cece and Sushil? Yeah, so um, you can follow. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Sushil. <laughs> um, you first. can find me on Twitter at at the blogs made, um, it's at the blogs made, and our blog is always a blogs made. So um, you can visit us there and get tons of advice. And CC, where can and we for find me, you? Yep, for me on Twitter, it's at CC New York, and it's spelled C E C I N E W Y O R K. And on Instagram, if you're there, I'm at CC Johnson. So follow me there, and Facebook, CC New York, and then on our Google Plus page as well at CC New York. So keep well, in touch. Thank you. I mean, I had so much fun. Did you guys? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was awesome. Thank okay. you for having us. Absolutely. So we will keep you posted with our next uh, What I Wish I Knew Before I Said I Do episode. And thank you guys for hanging out with us. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. You, you too. too.